Hello and welcome to The Culture Bar, an arts and culture podcast series brought to you by Harrison Parrott. In our Speed podcast mini-series of quick insights into music and culture from around the world, we talk to music industry professionals about the music of their homeland to give us a view into different music composers, sounds and instruments which make music both unique and universal. Today we will be talking to Harrison Parrott marketing assistant Holly Gedge all about the music of Wales. So please Holly, tell us a bit more about yourself. Hello, so my name's Holly um, and I'm from a small village called Bulch um, in the Brecon Beacons in Wales. Um, I was actually born in London, but moved to the Brecon Beacons um, when I was a baby, which is where my dad was born and raised. Um, and the maternal side of his family were Welsh. Um, so I grew up in Wales then until I went to university. Um, so there's definitely a part of me that feels pretty Welsh, despite the fact that I don't really have the accent, I know. But um, yeah, after university, I moved to London and started working with Harrison Parrott in the marketing department. Um, and I've been working here for just over two years now. Um, I grew up playing the cello and the piano, although I'm very much retired these days. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. So I think on that note, it's um, great to dive into the Welsh aspect of uh, music. So um, if you could tell us what has influenced Welsh music. Yeah, of course. So Wales has a very strong and distinctive link with music. Um, and I would say there are probably two main influences. Um, on this and that would be culture and history um, in Wales. So in terms of Welsh culture, um, the Welsh have two great passions, which is rugby and singing. Um, singing especially is a significant part of Welsh national identity um, and Wales is often traditionally referred to as the land of song. Um, if you congregate the Welsh at a rugby match, you literally won't be able to stop them breaking into song. <laughs> and I think this passion comes from a sense of shared history, um, identity and nostalgia as well. Um, the Welsh are incredibly patriotic and this most certainly influences their, their music. Um, and I think the culture of the Eisteddfod also has a great influence on Welsh music. So the Eisteddfod um, is an annual unique festival um, in Wales that provides a, a stage for competitions in music, dance, poetry and the visual arts. Um, and it's usually held through the medium of Welsh. Um, and these can take place at sort of primary school level, secondary school level, all the way through to regional and national level. So I remember we used to do them um, every year in my primary school on Deeth Goyle Dewi Sant, which is St David's Day on the 1st of March. Um, and we all used to dress up in our little Welsh costumes, um, sing our hearts out in Welsh and dance to Welsh folk music as well. So it's almost like drummed into you that as a Welsh person, you have to sing from a very young age, which is a lovely, I think. Um, so I think this, the sense of patriotism that the Welsh have combined with the culture of promoting music and singing from such a young age has had a huge influence on Welsh on the Welsh music scene and as a result I think Wales is proud we've got a lot of very um, famous well-known singers obviously Sir Bryn Terwell the opera singer Sir Tom Jones of course can't forget him um, Catherine Jenkins Dame Shirley Bassey Shaken Stevens and then bands as well such as Stereophonics and Catfish and the Bottomman um, so that's the culture and in terms of Welsh history quickly the mining industry in South Wales I think has strongly influenced the Welsh male voice choir tradition. So the South Walians were and continue to be incredibly proud of their mining heritage. Um, and the industry was notoriously difficult and dangerous to work in throughout the sort of 19th and 20th century. Um, and these mining communities, I think probably found solace and, and sociability um, in singing. And this ultimately led to the tradition of male voice singing and choirs. And it's still a huge, huge part of Welsh music culture today. Fantastic. And that's a really great way to learn about Welsh history and culture through the music. Actually, <laughs> It's a really amazing way to think about it. Um, yes. So uh, leading on from that, really, um, what sounds um, define Welsh music? Um, so I think probably harmony and part singing um, is a very defining Welsh music sound. Um, and I think an example of, of harmony and part singing can be heard in, in those Welsh male voice choirs that I mentioned just now. So for example, Triorki Male Voice Choir, it's probably one of the best known male voice choirs from the Rhondda Valley in South Wales. Um, their sound is so distinctively Welsh um, as the choir's roots are sort of steeped in the history of, of Welsh mining heritage. Um, and you'll hear a lot of harmony and part singing in, in the Eisteddfod competitions that I was mentioning earlier as well. 
Um, but I think a truly defining sound of Welsh music is probably hearing the Welsh national anthem um, being sung by a packed Principality Stadium in Cardiff just before an international rugby match, especially before playing England. <laughs> um, the 2013 anthem, I think it was, just before Wales beat England in the Six Nations, um, 30 to 3, yes, <laughs> can be can be watched on YouTube. And it's it's an incredible sound. It's one of those sounds that sort of sends shivers down your spine. Um, and I remember as well, I don't know if you remember in the opening ceremony of the London 2012 Olympics, they had those children's voice choirs from um, Scotland, England, Wales and, and Ireland. And I just remember the, the Welsh choir was was just so perfectly in tune and their harmony and part singing was just amazing. And I think that perfectly sort of summarises what Welsh music sounds like. Could you give us a spotlight on two Welsh composers who exemplify Welsh music for you? Yes, so I'm going to focus on two composers of two Welsh hymns um, that we sort of rung, sung routinely um, at school. So the first is John Hughes, um, who was born in Pembrokeshire, and he composed um, the hymn tune um, Calon Lan, which is very famous in Wales um, still to this day. So it's a song fit to lyrics written by a poet called Daniel James. Um, and I love the lyrics of the first verse. I didn't actually know the translation until I researched it. Um, but in Welsh, the first verse is Neither in Govan, Bowen. Moidus, Arabid, Nibelai Man, Govin Oif, Am Galon Hapis, Calon Honest, Calon Lan. And that translates in English to I don't ask for a luxurious life, the world's gold or its fine pearls. I ask for a happy heart, an honest part, a pure heart. And I think that for me just sort of summarizes the Welsh as very kind hearted and, and down to earth people. Um, yeah, so and then my second composer is another John Hughes. He's a different John Hughes. <laughs> Um, and he was born in Dowlice and raised in Pontypridd in South Wales. Um, and he was a miner actually in his local colliery in his hometown. Um, and he composed the very famous hymn Cumronda, um, which was written in 1905. And it's now a very popular, famous Welsh song sung at rugby matches and in church. And actually, the, the male voice choir, Triorki male voice choir that I just mentioned now, they, they sing both of these hymns um, on one of their albums on Spotify. So if you want to listen to that, um, yeah, that's a sort of true representation of. Welsh music. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the, those um, lyrics that you read out were so touching. It gave me goosebumps, actually. Oh, <laughs> oh that's oh, really gonna... beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it is lovely. And yeah, it's even better when you, when you hear it sung. So yeah, definitely. To allow our listeners to dive deeper into Welsh culture, uh, Holly, can you please give us your book recommendation? Yes, so my book recommendation is a book called Running for the Hills by Horatio Clare. Um, so it's an autobiography. Um, so Horatio Clare's family moved away from their corporate working life in London um, to go and live and work and farm on a remote hillside farm in Wales. Um, and the farm is actually based very close to my family home in Wales. And the book is so beautifully written. I don't think I've read a more beautifully written book. Um, it so accurately portrays like those really long, tough Welsh winters, the hardships of farming, um, the changing seasons, nature and all of that against the backdrop of the rugged, beautiful Welsh countryside. Um, so I think it truly captures rural life in Wales. Um, it's a lovely read. So yeah, I would recommend recommend that for my book. Oh, beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And on to your film recommendation. Yes, yeah, so my film recommendation is Dream Horse. So I watched this um, over Christmas with my family. It's a really feel good film. Um, so it's based on a, a true story um, about a group of Welsh people from a small community in the valleys in South Wales. Um, and they formed a syndicate um, and put their money together to breed and train their very own racehorse. Um, <laughs> so the racehorse was literally born on an allotment in the backyard of someone's house within this small community. Um, and then they all put in money together each week um, to get the racehorse sent off to a proper training yard. Um, and yeah, this racehorse actually ended up doing incredibly well and, and won the Welsh Grand National. Um, so I think, yeah, as I said, a real field of film. Um, and I think, again, it, it captures the spirit of a small Welsh community and, and the warm heartedness of the Welsh people as well. And finally, your uh, album recommendation. Yes, so my album um, is called Live at Triorki um, with Max Boyce. Um, so yeah, it's a live album. Um, and Max Boyce is a Welsh comedian, very famous Welsh comedian. Um, and this album was released in 1974. Um, so the album contains a mixture of comedic songs and poems, um, along with Boyce's interactions with the crowd at Triorki Rugby rugby club um, and he's on a guitar um, and the songs on the album are mostly rugby themed and the most famous is called hymns and arias 
Um, and it's often heard today sung by Welsh fans at international rugby matches. And it's also become a song that the Swansea City football fans sing um, at football matches as well. And I think this album just perfectly captures Welsh, Welsh culture and it's, it's really funny. So, yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. That's such an interesting mix for an album as well. You know, kind of like yeah. comedy, music and kind of, yeah, uh, it's almost like a variety act on an album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds amazing. Yeah, it is. it's exactly that. Yeah, it's really good fun. Fantastic. Well, um, thank you very much for joining us today, Holly. Uh, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Holly Gedge was interviewed by Fiona Livingston. You can find out more about Holly's recommendations in our show notes. Um, to keep up with our latest podcast releases, please subscribe. <laughs>